Okay. So the last thing we'll talk about here for chapter two is a tool that we're going to need uh, as we move on, especially in discrete two. And this needed tool is matrices. And we get, we don't even get as far as what matrices are in college algebra. We are only going to say what's a matrix and what's operations on matrix. Because normally, you, let's say you go to linear algebra, which is the, you spend the entire first part of linear algebra talking about matrices and matrix arithmetic and matrix algebra. We don't even do that. We don't even talk about finding inverses. We're just going to go through here and talk about what's a matrix, how do you add, how do you multiply, and then we're going to introduce a special type of matrix called a 0, 1 matrix. And it has its own operations that's going to be called a meet, a join, and a Boolean product. So the first one is, so type one is the matrix is going to be defined as a rectangular array of real numbers. So for example, A is equal to one, two, three, four, five, six. For dimensions, we always say row by column. And so A is what? 2 by 3. We always say row first, then column. It's always row first, then column. So matrices normally in terms of notation, if we use capital for the matrix and we use lowercase of IJ for the internal elements, and this is normally say A11, A12, over to A1N, and then we will go down to A, whoops, M1, A, M2 to A, M, N. We have this rectangular array. So if I say lowercase with an IJ index, it tells you the row column position. A capital normally is a representation of a matrix. Now, we all have seen matrices before. We use them for solving systems of linear equations to collect things for particular reasons. All right, what are some things that we do with it? First off, when would you call two matrices equal? <clears throat> Should they be the same size? Yes. And if they are the same size, then you look on the inside and check if they're the same elements in the same places, right? Same order, right? So for this to happen tells us that one, both are same size. Let's say we call it M by N. And the next thing we check is that AIJ is equal to BIJ for all IJ. Every position has the same element in the same spot. So that's equality. Two. How do we add? This is simply, well, first thing that has to happen is what? Both are m by n. They need to be the same size, or else addition makes no sense. And then all we do is we take the position of the a's, add it to the identical position of the B's. Third, A times B. And it isn't until linear algebra that they actually define why we do what we do. All right? So what's the size of A? Let's say the size of A is M by K. What must the size of B have on the first value? It needs to be K and it can say by n, and it spits out a c, which is m by n. Why, why does this happen? Because this is based upon matrices are built out of trying to solve systems of equations. Because it's built out of solving systems of equations, the multiplication is based upon the scalar product. And the scalar product is a multiplication of a row times a column. And so the number of columns of the first across one row 
is going to have to be the same number of elements of the rows of the second, right, of the column, one column down all of its rows. So this thing is made up of C, where the Cij position is just what happens here is A, and then B, and then we get out a C. And the Cij spot, which is a single value, will take A's ith row, which would be A, row I, column 1, row I, column 2, row I, column K. And then we go to B's jth column, which would be B, Row 1, column J, B, row 2, column J, down to B, row K, column J. And then I just take the scalar product of these two. What's the scalar product? You take positions in same order, multiply, and then add. And so I would take the first thing, which is going to be A, I, 1, and the first thing, which is B, 1, J, and multiply it, and then add it to... Let's go to the second. That is A, I, 2, B, 2, J, and we keep on going until we get to A, I, K, B, K, J. This thing here is, again, it's the scalar product. If we would look at this, all right, do, 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 do. see if I can do this. Nope. There we go. So we take this column, and this row, this column. Matrix multiplication always requires two fingers. You go multiply, 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 add. Sum it all up. The reason why is because system, the way systems of equations work, we have to use a scalar product to create the, normally on the left is the coefficients and the right is the variables, which is equal to a scalar. Okay, and so fourth thing is the transpose. All the transpose is is we take A and flip the, instead of IJ, we make it AJI. Transpose is just swap row columns. Column one becomes row one. Column two becomes row two. Column three becomes row three. We just swap it. And a little note here. If A transpose is equal to A, we call A symmetric. In particular, it's symmetric about its diagonal. If we have some special matrices, big O matrix is the matrix of nothing but zeros. That would be the additive what? It's the additive identity. Because if you add zeros to every element, are any of the elements going to change? Nope. And the second one is i, which is ones down the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. This is the multiplicative identity. But if we have the additive identity and the multiplicative identity, we can talk about inverses. What is the additive inverse? That's a plus a minus a, which is take a negative on all the elements, spits out 0. So the additive inverse is just simply multiplied by a minus 1, which means take every element that you see and throw a minus on it. And the multiplicative. inverse, which is A and its inverse multiplies to I, A inverse A multiplies to I. This class is not interested in finding inverses, period. It's interested in showing that they're inverses, which means I'm asking, do you know how to multiply? 
all, the only skill for matrices that we need in this class is can you add, can you multiply? So this is actually a problem. Do you know how to multiply? Take this matrix times this matrix, do you get I? Flip the order, do you get I? If the answer is yes, they are inverses. We are not interested in when do they have inverses, why do they have inverses, what is the determinant, all this other sorts of stuff, right? That they have to be row equivalent to the identity matrix and every row operation has an elementary matrix that, right? I'm not interested in that. That's linear algebra. You need to go to my linear algebra class and then we'll, I'll, well, we're done with all that. All you need to do is multiply. But now that I have the identity, we can introduce multiple multiplications, which is a to the r, which is simply a to the r minus 1 times a. And we define a to the 0 to simply be the identity matrix. And for this, a must be square, or else it makes no sense. In other words, how would I find a to the fifth? Well, that's a to the fourth times a. But what's a to the fourth? It's a to the third times. All right, fine. I have to a. I have to find a squared, a cubed, a fourth, a to the fifth. I got it. Just keep multiplying by a, and then you'll get the answer. But what if it's a to the zero? You just get the identity back out. So, for this class. We should be able to, we'll say A was equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, and B was equal to uh, 1, 2, negative 1, 0, 2, 1, 0, 3. And then you should be able to do things like, uh, what is A plus A equal to? What would be A times B equal to? What is A to the fifth power? What is that equal to? All right, you should be able to do all the sorts of stuff. A plus A is pretty easy, right? Just times two, everybody. Is everybody okay with multiplication? What's A times B? Again, it's it's the weird one in that it's not positional. What do you do? You take row one and column one. What's one times one? What's two times two? What's one plus four? Five. So row one, column one, spits out five. You just go across here and go, okay, two, two, four, negative one, zero, negative one, zero, two, and three, six. All right, you just go across that and just row one, column, 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 and just be able to multiply on this. We just need to be able to do the skill sets. So that was four, that was negative one, that was six, three and eight is 11, 6 and 4 is 10, negative 3, 12. Is that right? I don't know, I'm probably, I want some yeses. As fast as I did that, just kind of eyeballing it, that's as fast as you're going to have to do this. Right. If I give you a 4 by 4 times a 10, well, well that wouldn't work, say a 3 by 4 times a 4 by 2, which would spit out a, a 3 by 4 times a 4 by 2, it would spit out a 3 by 2, which is only going to have six numbers. <laughs> but you should be able to do that, dun, 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 number, dun, 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 number, right? Just go through it, you're going to have to be able to do arithmetic. And the number one issue that I run into for all my linear algebra students, the first first part of the class is, can you do arithmetic and algebra in your head quickly? Because it's a 100% skill set. And the answer usually is yes or no. And if no, we have a very bimodal exam. Right? That's just what happens it's in calculus. People can do arithmetic and algebra, and algebra and trig, or they can't. If you can't, Every problem you do is wrong, right? You have to be able to do these. So this is, these are the tools that we need to be able to do.